expected to uh, be brought to the territory, and that's going to be used over the next five years to improve roads, uh, infrastructure, cybersecurity, uh, the airport, the port. And also, we're also waiting on action uh, by Congress on the BBB, the Build Back Better uh, Act. And so now I believe we've reestablished our connection with uh, the former governor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. Who is this? This is Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. You sound different on, on the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you kind of sound different, too. <laughs> <laughs> but we're still here. Okay. All uh, right. Guys, okay. Soon, right? Yeah. So how, how are things going over at GVB? I noticed that you guys had uh, some uh, familiarization tours going on. We have uh, had some Korean uh, media. And now I understand we have some Japanese tour agents and social media influencers are here. Can you kind of explain, is this kind of the new strategy uh, for GVB? Uh, not necessarily uh, new, but certainly we're up and out in front with it. And uh, we're kind of rushing to make sure that, uh, that we don't get left behind because we're been facing a lot of, uh, uh, you know, strong competition. So we got to get in front of them. And we're offering it more uh, then, and even the uh, the paying of the PCR is uh, sort of unique. I don't think anybody else in the world has uh, offering it. Mm -hmm. What did you say? I'm sorry. The the PCR. Yeah. Well, we're, well, you know, we're getting Koreans in right now by by the tons, right? And that uh, we, of course, of, we're offering to pay their PCR test to return to uh, to uh, back to Korea. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that. That would have been two hundred dollars of their, their their you know vacation money. So that's a big hit for for us. Right. And you know, I wanted to talk about the the CDC. They um, implemented the new mandatory vaccinations. I think for foreign nationals, uh, they coming into the United States. How's that been going for for GVB? Well, of course that hurts us because they uh, they. You know, we were doing the Airbnb, uh, although some are still coming through uh, with the uh, uh, from the Philippines and Asia. But uh, they really knocked out our Taiwan market. Uh, we they knocked out our our already uh, slated charter flights. Uh, you know, 22 charter flights uh, because they they wouldn't be able to get on the flight until they were vaccinated, and their whole purpose was to come here to get vaccinated. But the way we're seeing it right now, that's not necessarily lost completely. Uh, our next strategy, as soon as uh, that uh, the, uh, the CDC number four category where we're at right now, uh, at least goes down to three, which is hopefully in the next week or so, just the way we're looking at the car scores, uh, that we can now market Airbnb for the booster shots from Taiwan. Okay. Um, you know, statistics are showing that uh, Japan Japan outbound, uh, it's been increasing, but still a fraction of uh, pre-pandemic numbers, right? What's it going to take, uh, in your opinion, and how long do you think it will take to see a return to, to the big numbers that we used to see? For Japan or uh, Korea, For if, uh, last year we're hoping at least to $200,000 to the end of the fiscal year, which was up September 30, the way we're forecasting it and the way the, the uh, six uh, Korean carriers are already cranking up. Some are, are on the are coming here already, but for the most part, it'll be the end of this month and into December, January. So, uh, if we raise, uh, we can hit 200,000 from Korea and possibly more. The way we're looking at how Korea has really beaten the uh, the odds and uh, are way in front of their vaccination rate. Uh, I think that Japan also, uh, from what I understand, is now. Uh, like you know, wanting to get a, a piece of the action on the on the payment of the PCR test going back. Uh, so it's just to just to see how fast they move. Uh, it's more on the return of uh, of the of the Japanese tourists or the Korean tourists that 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 is really the the, the problematic part of it is that uh, once they 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 stop and you know and and lower the quarantine. Uh, requirements going back, uh, I think that uh, they'll, they'll start flying out Guam. Guam is, is three and a half hours away, three hours, three and a half hours away, and, and we're the number one U.S. market for Korea. Number one in Japan, of course, uh, looks at us as, as a close, you know, they want, they want to travel, and where do they travel to? Three hours away. So it's, uh, 
the way Japan's moving, I think that they're, they're lessening the, the stringency of their protocol. Right. And you know, we're talking a lot about Korea. We even talked about Korea the last time uh, you were on the program. And I thought that you you were supposed to be heading to Korea, I, I want to say, around this time. Right. Uh, and then they uh, they did not uh, uh, ultimately approve uh, uh, us coming in. Uh, they they probably would say maybe January to you know uh, the kind of business where it's it's really very very strict on what kind of business you're going to do there, and uh, so they kind of nixed us. Uh, first, there was uh, we were we were booked on Korean airlines locally. They accepted our bookings, but then the Korean airlines in in Korea said no. Uh, that's only for 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 Korean uh, citizens. So then then it was like too hard to move. For the other air, uh, low, ca- low fare carriers, so it's uh, they're still very strict about other people coming into Korea. Oh, well, that's a bummer. Whatever, whatever happened, and what is the the latest with? Um, uh, you're still kind of tr- trying to partner with uh, Palau. Is yes, that still? That, yes, that, that was part of the discussion that mm-hmm. would go on in Korea, and uh, so we're still pursuing it. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, Electronic wise, but we really need to sit down with uh, with the, the people in Korea, uh, Ministry of Transportation and the uh, actual carriers. So uh, th- that's 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 part of the of, of our mission when we were going to go to Palau. Yeah. I mean to Korea. Korea. Um, I, I did want to ask. Uh, you know, BBMR recently they released the the report on the allocation and the expenditures. Uh, for some of the ARP funding, but I, I didn't, I don't believe I saw the Guam Visitors Bureau on that list. Are you guys still anticipating to receive any of the ARP money? Oh, no, we've, we've, gotten, we've gotten already into our account $20 million. Okay. Uh, the key here is that we're going to roll out next week the real purpose of, of because we wanted the governor to, to sort of determine the kind of purpose she would want uh that, that 20 million dollars to go to and uh, i believe she's de- she's developed her her and and, and the tenant governor josh with have developed a long-range vision for for tourism in guam and uh, we're working on that vision for her to make a presentation and uh, you know and it's going to require a little bit more money but uh but certainly that's uh that's already in our in our account by the way just to let you know oh well that's that's good to know. <laughs> yes, yes. Can, can we, 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 we kind of, you know, wanted to make sure that when, it, when she sends it to us, uh, she sends it to us with uh, some kind of a caveat so that we can do a long-range planning. Sometimes it's hard to, to, to long-range plan when, when, when the management doesn't have the full control of what to do with, with funds. That's the board's policy. But this is the this is the governor's money. She's going to make that determination. Do you have? Um, I guess can you share with us anything about what the the plan is for then the twenty million? Well, um, pretty soon, but I can't really now because the governor. I we briefed the lieutenant governor yesterday. Uh, the, the, the governor has arrived back, so we're going to give her a fuller brief, and then we'll make her make that determination on on uh, uh, rolling it out uh, uh, in a, in a, uh, a, a a bigger fashion than just an announcement. I see. Um, is it going to go to marketing? Is it going to go to like beautification or anything like that? Can you tell us? Well, I, it's hard. I I, I want to get in, uh, you know move up. It's it's going to be a long range vision that the governor has told us what she wanted that money for, and uh, so we're developing sort of a uh, a concept, and uh, it's not just going to be a uh, a, a GBB a gov one function, but it's uh, probably. Work it out like uh, like how I, I worked it out in the past with a uh, with the uh, uh, public private partnership that we did with Pleasure Island mm. because you know we we haven't really done anything other than build hotels here. We're going to do something more of bringing attractions to Guam, uh, and then uh, you know people will come here for that attraction, and then naturally you have to look for a hotel, so that becomes secondary. Mm. Uh, good morning, Gov. This is uh, Jason again. Um, you know, I'm uh, good morning, Buenas. Uh, I'm seeing also a lot of uh, you know we haven't talked about it in um, maybe in about a month or so, but there's a lot going on on social media. People really uh, wanting to see what's going to come uh, from the Matapang project. I know a lot of people are very interested in what what can come out of that. Well, it's already 
you know, we're doing the infrastructure with the groundwork up mm-hmm. right now. That's moving forward. Hopefully in the next two months, the, the bid will go out. We've got to put a storm drainage in, et cetera. Uh, that, that, that's moving forward. And that's, uh, we already got $14.8 million plus uh, another couple of millions we have set aside. So that's moving forward. Uh, uh, we got, uh, you know, we were trying to hopefully get $18 million from, uh, from EDA funding, but instead we got $14.9 million from another source. That I think is still EDA, but, but that came pretty, pretty fast. And so we, we're, we're getting some funds into the, uh, into the uh, uh, GBB coffers. Mm-hmm. And so it is moving forward, and in partnership with Public Works and Vince Ariola, we are we are really pulling pulling our monies together. Mm-hmm. You, you you mentioned uh, Public Works. Uh, I'm sure you are aware of the president signing the historic infrastructure uh, act into law, uh, which will go to uh, improvements to water infrastructure, roads, bridges, etc. Uh, are you anticipating that any projects will go towards uh, improving the roads and especially like the flooding down yeah. in Tumon? Uh, you're, you're very smart, Sabrina. You know that car with there is never long, hat, right? <laughs> and so as soon as they signed that darn thing, I, I saw Biden sign that. Uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor immediately got my hands, uh, my dips in there for $20 million to do infrastructure right around in Tumon as well. So that's uh, that's pretty pretty smart. Right. All so right. We get $20 million and uh, we've got some of the vision moving forward. Awesome. And so uh, I did want to ask about how it, how it's going down in two months because uh, I don't get out a whole lot. And maybe maybe I should. Um, so uh, how is it going? Because I know that we've had the the Carl Vincent uh, on Guam, and I think Cope North is is coming up. Mm-hmm. How are the businesses doing down there? Hello. Yes. I, can, I you there a little bit. What was uh, with the military that's uh, been been oh. on Guam? How has it been going down in two well, months? They gave us a shot in the arm, of course, and a couple of businesses, uh, in anticipation of them coming in, actually opened up, and we're, we're 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 trying to get them to continue to stay open because the Koreans are on their way. Uh, we're trying to get the optional, smaller optional tours uh, uh, open up as well, uh, because they, you know, they they are seeing, and seeing is believing. And they're, 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 hopefully that would be the impetus for them to open up their businesses. And I know Gita has been very helpful in getting them some, some, some funds to be able to offset their losses. And that, that you know, we're working very closely with Mel and, and, and Ed uh, Camacho there, Gita to, and Joanne Camacho to, to partner up with us uh, while they provide some funds to uh, ease the burden of, the, of those uh, uh, you know, industry partners that, that have restaurants and other stores, uh, uh, they they are now seeing that there is, in fact, uh, light at the end of this tunnel and uh, Koreans walking around, uh, diving and doing all those things are giving a good sign for those people that are in that kind of business. Mm-hmm. Gov, uh, how, how challenging has it been from a strategic standpoint to, um, or I guess I should say, have we even had to modify um, our approach to hospitality, because of course, as Guamanians, you know, we always roll out the red carpet and, you know, governor, you, you know, better than anybody, you know, you've hosted, uh, heads of state and, you know, you've, um, you know, you've always been uh, very accommodating for anyone who, you know, uh, seeks your time, but, you know, these, these really awkward times that we've had to go through through the last, like almost two years and everything, they've forced us to adjust. So have we even had to modify, um, you know, our traditional form of, you know, I mean, literally the campaign, um, the marketing campaign before was called Welcome All Visitors Enthusiastically. So how much of yeah. a challenge has that been in well, it, being able well, to, you know, welcome people to the island and let them experience the island in the way that we've been accustomed to? Just as, as, as with that question, as, as you have recognized it, we uh, at the outset when Jerry and I first got into the GVB is that we're going to go back to the cultural centric way that uh, Guam was promoted in 1970. Guam people were coming here because of the people and the culture mm-hmm. and the nice, uh, you know, clean, friendly beaches area. And uh, so we're going back to the future, uh, or going to the future, but going back first to this to this very, uh, very, uh, you know, uh, reason that that tourism really hit it well on Guam. So that's part of the vision that we're going to move forward. Is let's get back to our cultural centric uh, uh, sale for the island and. Uh, 
and get the people involved and not only will the people enjoy whatever we're going to put out there but they would also in, uh, be a learning process for our children uh, and immerse themselves in the culture and the arts of tomorrow uh, we want to wrap everybody in uh, into this to this project and uh, without having to say any more uh, hopefully the governor can explain more on this vision yeah, all, well, all hands on deck all aboard <laughs> Thanks for the hint. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gov. Um, any final comments? Any uh, message to the people? Uh, well, you know, people of Guam, uh, you're seeing it, you're believing it, and you're still the one. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. Thanks, Gov. Thank you. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays, Gov. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. All right, that was Governor uh, Carl Gutierrez. Uh, didn't know that they received $20 million already in ARP mm -hmm. funds. Uh, so good for GVB. He did kind of hint that next week the governor may be rolling out uh, her plan, her vision uh, for tourism uh, going forward. So that's something we can all look forward to uh, for next week. But today, 1130, the governor mm -hmm. will be holding a press conference, um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, to announce the easing of restrictions what that all means we'll have to wait and see you've got to think too that like uncle carl has got to be you know i mean everybody's been frustrated everybody's tired everybody's you know confused but you know he's always been somebody that you know and whether you you know you agree with his methods you know politically or anything like that i mean that's that's completely irrelevant he has always been someone who gets stuff done i mean everybody agrees on that and throughout this whole pandemic experience that we've always been through we've interviewed him you know so many times on the show and, mm -hmm. he'll, and he'll come on one time and i'll say yeah we got a plan in action we're meeting about it we believe we've got a good strategy we're communicating with our partners and then the next week something comes up and he's like all right now we got to put that on hold or we got to do a 180 we got to pivot we got to modify yeah. or whatever like that so he's so the fact though. that they're right on the <laughs> precipice of you know of you know executing and everything like that is is actually pretty inspiring yeah and he's good though he's very quick when when uh we asked about the, the Biden, the infrastructure law. He already <laughs> hit up the governor like, hey, <laughs> over here. <laughs> so I tell you what, we're going to uh, take a break and okay. we'll be back with more on the link. Looking for TV schedules, upcoming sports, KUAM special presentations? TV has been on the air for 65 years. 65 years of growing 